You guys know I have been gone for the past couple months. I really haven't had a lot of time home, but this week I am home and you guys know what that means. I'm able to go play at my home poker room, Texas Card House, Dallas. So today I'm gonna jump in the one, two or the two, five, whatever's open. Probably try to jump in the two, five if it looks good, but let's hope we can get some good hands for the vlog and book a nice win because that would be really nice. So anyway, I'll see you guys inside for some poker. Also, there is a slight possibility I could be suckered into playing a tournament because, well, you know me. It's so nice to be back at my home poker room, Texas Card House Dallas in Dallas, Texas. Our name just got called to the 2-5, so we're gonna go take our seat. This is a 2-5 match stack game, but we're gonna be in for $1,000 as it looks like all the stacks around us are about 1,000 or less. In this hand, there's a couple limps in early position, and I look down at ace nine of diamonds and the cutoff. This is a hand I want to raise and try to isolate and play a pot in position. Both of my opponents call, so we're going three ways to a flop. The flop is king 5-3 with two diamonds, so we flop the nut flush draw in position. My opponents check it over to me, and we have the nut flush draw, we have range advantage with the king out there, and I think we can get a lot of our opponent's hands to fold, so I bet $45. Only the sticky, loose player to my right makes the call, so we head to a turn card, which is the 10 of clubs, bringing in the club flush draw. He checks yet again. So now we have a decision if we want to continue the aggression with our nut flush draw, or check and realize the equity of our hand. In theory, we want to be betting all of our weak ace -X flush draws because they unblock and dominate other flush draws. But in this case, we want to check back some of our nut flush draws like ace-9 for example because if we had a hand like ace-jack of diamonds, we did pick up a gutter and turned way more equity so we can continue bombing this turn. But from an exploitative standpoint, we want to continue betting because our opponents just aren't going to check raise us enough and they do overfold quite a bit. Against this particular player, I'm not entirely sure, but if we do continue betting here, we do still have a lot of equity and can hit our card on the river, building a bigger pot for us and therefore making more money. However, in game, I decided to check and keep my opponent in there and hope to bink an ace or a diamond. However, the river does not help us, but it does bring in a club flush. My opponent now leads for $125. We have ace high and absolutely nothing going for us, so this is gonna be an easy fold, but I talked to my one-on-one -on -one coach, Fausto Valdez, about this spot, and if you guys are looking for an amazing, incredible one-on-one -on -one coach, make sure you hit him up on Instagram, at Fausto underscore Valdez. The information will be below, and mention me for a nice discount. So after talking to him, I did learn quite a bit in this spot, and I'll be able to use it for the future. For this hand, I lost about $90 on a double board bomb pot where I flopped the nuts straight, but I got run down by a flush. Then I raised pocket fives and had to fold multi-way, and also the same thing when I raised queen jack of hearts, I got a bunch of collars, we went multi-way, I whiffed and folded. So that leads us to this hand. It folds all the way around to the small blind. A little bit of history about this opponent, he had been showing some bluffs, loves to make some creative plays, and I saw him even put in a sick 4-bet bluff with 7-5 of diamonds. So I know this player came to play and he's capable. Most of the time he leans towards being very loose and passive, but he can ramp up the aggression. So he's in the small blind and raises to $20. I'm in the big blind and look down at ace deuce offsuit. This hand can actually go several different ways. We can continue through a call, we can continue through a three bet, or just fold as this hand is not very good. However, against this opponent and his perception of me, I think we can get away with a three bet here. Most opponents, when it folds all the way around him in the small blind, they get very uncomfortable knowing they're gonna have to play a pot out of position. So most people lean towards flatting or folding, and if they do raise, they tend to have a little bit stronger of a hand. But in this case, I know our opponent, when he raises to $20, is going to be very, very wide. He can have all sorts of Broadway type hands. He could even have suited connectors, ASEX hands. He can have pretty much any reasonable hand in this spot. A three bet serves many purposes. First of all, ace-deuce offsuit does block some strong ace-x combinations, and by putting in a 3-bet, we can end up getting a lot of better ace-x hands to fold. For example, if he has a hand like ace-6 offsuit, ace-7 offsuit, ace-8 offsuit, etc., those are just going to have to go into the muck. And if he calls, there's a high percentage that we can just bet the flop, turn, or river and get my opponent to fold. Given the fact that my opponent has such a wide range, he's going to miss so many flops, turns, and rivers that he's going to have a lot of air a very high percentage of the time. Our opponent also probably perceives us to be pretty tight. I haven't played very many hands. I know he's competent and been paying attention. By calling, we can play a smaller pot and realize the equity of our hand. However, our hand does not play well post, so taking this down pre-flop would be a great result. So I put in a 3-bet to $60. My opponent calls, and so we go heads up to a flop of 3-5-6. Our opponent checks 
it to us. Now one of the problems three betting this hand and getting called is we end up in no man's land a lot of the time post flop, meaning our hand just kind of sucks. We do flop some equity with a straight drop, but it is the bad end. So when our opponent checks to us, we're going to put in a bet here and continue the aggression. We can get a lot of my opponent's hands like king 10, queen 9, jack 10, and a lot of king x to fold. On this type of board texture, considering what our range should be a decent amount of time, we're going to have a lot of strong hands, some pocket pairs like pocket 9s, 8s, etc. We're also going to have some high cards, so we don't want to bet small on this type of board. We want to deny equity to a lot of my opponent's holdings because this board can get a little bit dicey. So I put in a half pot bet of $60. My opponent doesn't think very long before putting in the fold, so we get it through with the ace deuce off. In this hand, there's not much theory to talk about, but I do flop trips on the top board in this double board bomb pot and the nut straight on the bottom board. I bet pot on the flop, the turn, and shoved the river. I ended up getting a full house on the top board. In this hand, there's a raise under the gun, and the player who's really loose on my right makes the call. I look down at ace six of diamonds on the button. I think this is a great hand to flatten this spot. We get to keep all worse flush draws in and keep our position and realize our equity. So I make the call. The big blind calls as well. So we're gonna go four ways to a flop of jack, nine, seven with two diamonds. So we flop the nut flush draw. The flop checks all the way over to me, and while I can certainly start betting here, we can also check. So I put in the check, and we head to a turn card, which is the eight of diamonds. So now we have the nut flush. It checks all the way over to me yet again, and we can get called by like the king of diamonds, all jack x, and of course 10x because that makes it straight. There's also lots of two pairs that my opponents can have, so I bet $55. Only the big blind calls, and we head to a river card, which is a seven of clubs, so it does pair the board. He checks yet again. Now we can get called by some random 7x, some 2 pair, a jack x, or a 10 for a straight. I don't think my opponent ever has a flush playing it this way, but we have to go for some value, so I bet $125 hoping my opponent will find a call. However, unfortunately for us, he finds a pretty quick fold, but we do win a nice little pop. In this hand, the table is a bit short-handed, so we are seven-handed in this one. Under the Gun, who is a somewhat active player, raises to $20. I look down at Ace Queen of Diamonds, and I put in the three bet to 65. Then, out of nowhere, I am so shocked to see my super, super tight opponent to my left put in the cold call to my three bet. The Under the Gun player thinks for a little bit and then makes the call as well, so we're gonna go three ways to a flop of eight, five, four with two clubs. The Under the Gun player checks, and now it's on me. My plan to isolate and play this pot in position has been completely ruined because of the cold call to my left. He should be heavily weighted towards hands like tens or jacks, possibly even queens if he's as tight as I think he is, but I'm not going to continue betting here, especially when he probably has a very strong hand, so I put in the check, and sure enough, he puts in a bet of $75. My opponent on my right makes the call, and I fold. It turns out that my opponent under the gun had pocket queens, and then my opponent to my left had pocket fives for a flopped set. He said he was tired of folding, and he wanted to get lucky, and well, he did. Maybe he saved me some money because I probably would have played this pot pretty aggressively and lost a big one to pocket queens. In this hand, the player to my left, the one I told you was so, so tight, not playing any hands, he all of a sudden completely changed up his game. He's straddling to 15 under the gun, limping and calling or raising almost every single hand preflop, and that's part of the reason why I love poker so much. You can never account for what players might do, and poker is a game of infinite possibilities, and that's what makes it so fun and challenging. So, that being said, the player on my left straddles 15, the button and the small blind call, and I look down at 5-4 of diamonds in the big blind. I'm gonna peel getting this price, so we're gonna go four ways to a flop of eight, six, three, rainbow, so we flop ourselves an open ender. It checks over to the button and he bets $30. I've seen him take stabs in position quite a bit, so he can be really wide in this spot. I call the 30 with my open ender and we go heads up to a turn card. The turn is another six. I check it over to him and luckily for us, our opponent checks back. So at this point, I don't think my opponent has a very strong hand at all. 
He might have a three, maybe some showdown value or just a give up, but the river helps us out is an offsuit seven, so we do make our straight. I can't let this one check through, gotta go for some value, so I bet $55. And like I predicted, my opponent did not have a strong hand as he mucked very, very quickly and we take down this nice pot with a four or five of diamonds. After that hand, the table had gotten pretty stagnant, a lot of rec players had left, and the seats got filled with a bunch of regs. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, but the game just got a bit tighter, and I felt like the easy money had left the table. So it's time to rack up. I took my chips to the cashier, and we were in the game for a thousand, cashed out with fourteen fifty for a profit of four hundred and fifty dollars. All right, so not the most eventful session. However, we found some good spots and of course the bomb pot helped. So we were in for a thousand, out for 1450 for a profit of $450. The table started out really good. There was a lot of recreational players. And then as the night went on, the seats filled with more and more of the grinders and the regs. So I thought it was a good time to leave. But because this wasn't the most eventful vlog, I'm gonna come back tomorrow and play another session. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for some more poker at TCH Dallas. We are back for round two at Texas Card House Dallas, my home poker room. And yesterday's session was a little bit uneventful. So hopefully today we can get in some more exciting spots. Let's play some one, two or two, five, depending what's open, but we'll try and get in the two, five game and we'll start with a thousand dollars. All right, let's get in there and play some cards. Point. We're about 45 minutes or so into the session and I have seen this recreational player right here do some very interesting things. He doesn't have a fold button and even though he's a recreational player, most of them play quite passively, but not this one. He loves to raise, check raise, three bet, do all those sorts of things. He also limps every hand if he's not raising, so his VPIP has been about 80%. I've seen him win pot after pot after pot and nobody at the table has been doing anything about it. He's been getting away with what I think is murder. I guess no one has had a hand to fight back against him, but he has been just taking down so many pots without showdown, so I have yet to see a hand from this guy. He limps in early position, the player to my right limps, and then I look down at king three of clubs, I flick in the limp, and then the player to my left puts in a raise to $35. He picks up four colors, so we're gonna go five ways to a flop of queen nine four with all clubs, so we flop a king high flush. The amateur player, the one I said loves to bet, 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 he puts out a bet of $125. It folds to me and I have yet to see him show down a hand so I don't know if he's just had it all these times or if he just loves to take stabs at pots but being a recreational amateur player I think that he's going to be married to all of his hands at this point that want to lead this flop. If he has a worse flush well we just want to win a big pot and I don't want a club to roll off and kill the action so I put in a raise to 250. All the players to my left folds and then it goes around to him and he looks back at his cards doesn't think very long and then puts in the fold and he only had about 200 behind so I was honestly very shocked to see him fold. Pretty sad that we got him to fold a worse hand but this kid is a wild card and we're gonna figure him out and we win a very nice pot. In this hand, we play a very interesting pot against Mr. Recreational Player. He limps in early position and it folds around to me. I want to isolate him. I want to play a pot in position, so I raise to 20 with a 7 of hearts. The small blind and the big blind call, and of course, Mr. Recreational Player comes along as well, so we are going to go four ways to a flop of deuce, five, deuce with one heart. It checks over to the recreational gentleman, and as predicted, he wants to put in more bets, and he bets $25. Now that I know when he likes to lead and put bets in, he's going to be really wide, maybe even completely bluffing with tons of air. It's really hard for him to have any type of holding on this board, and I raised preflop. I want to continue my aggression. I want to take this pot heads up against him and isolate and get the small blind and the big blind to fold, so I make it $80. The small and the big blind fold very, very quickly, so my plan is coming together. The way the recreational player's physical tells look is he always looks very unsure. He was doing a lot of things that are very typical of 
amateur rec players, so I felt like he was very weak in the spot. He ends up making the call for $80, so now this pot is brewing a little bit. The turn is the Ace of Diamonds, and now he is not going to slow down even though I raised him on the flop, he leads into me for $125. Well, we've certainly got ourselves into a sticky spot at this point. I think if he's a beginner or rec player, he can float the flop after I raise with maybe some ace-x combinations like, for example, ace-jack offsuit, or he just has a deuce that he wants to get value from, or he has a five that he's somewhat turning into a bluff. This card should be really bad for him in theory to continue betting, but I don't expect him to know that. So I think if he's bluffing, he's going to continue doing so. I'm not exactly loving it, but I can't fold once I make my hand, so I put in the call. The river is an offsuit 6, and now my opponent takes quite a while to make a decision. You can see him shuffle around with chips, think about what he's going to do, and then finally he does start to put a bet together and he finally carves out a size of $230. At this point, my opponent is telling me he has a very strong hand, like a deuce, a fives fool, or a strong ace-x combination, something like that. But because of everything I've seen so far in this session, I know he cannot have it every single time, and this guy has not been called down yet, not one time. So I feel like it's my time to put in the call and see if I'm right about my read on this opponent. So I stick in the call, and he says those magical words, you're good. If I'm good, I'm good. So I roll over my cards and he mucks and we take down the biggest pot of the session with our hero call with the ace seven of hearts getting a little bit creative. In this hand, we find ourselves in another very interesting spot against the rec player. He's under the gun and makes a very small raise of $10. He's been playing every single hand since he lost that pot against me, and I think he might be a little bit tilted and shook. I look down at ace queen of spades, and I raise to $30. The player on my left makes the call for 30, and then a player in the small blind, who I think is somewhat competent, puts in a raise of $135. The amateur player then five bet jams all in. Now it's back on me. This spot was actually a little bit closer than it seems because I know the small blind is capable of squeezing wider than most people would. However, with the player to my left, I still have to consider, and I do have to be concerned that the small blind is going to have a very premium hand most of the time, I decide on a fold even though it was a little bit of a tough spot. The player to my left shows us pocket nines and puts in the fold, then the small blind tanks and tanks and tanks for quite a while, and at this point I was a little bit bummed to see him not snap call, that means he didn't have a strong a hand as I thought he did and might have been putting in some moves. However, he finally lands on a call and it turns out the amateur player had jacks and, and the small blind four better had ace queen offsuit and ends up winning. Shortly after that hand, I actually ended up playing an almost $4,200 double board PLO bomb pot where I flopped top set, we got it in, and I ended up holding on one board and my opponent had the nut flush on the bottom board, so we ended up chopping it up. And then to end the session, I end up raising ace-king suited to $15, get two calls, and the flop comes king-6-3 with two clubs and one spade, we have a monster, and end up taking a smallish pot down, and now it's time to rack up. We were in the game for $1,000 we never had to top up, and we cashed out with $1,604 for a profit of $604. And on the screen it shows me I have $2,600, that's because I had an extra thousand in my bag in case we needed to top up. And if you're wondering what I use to track all of my stats, I use Poker Analytics. It's an amazing app, very intuitive, easy to use, and they have so many filters and ways that you can see all of your stats and everything you would want to know about your poker game. Make sure you download it and check it out, I'll post the link below. Well, today's session was a lot more interesting than yesterday's, and it's really awesome to sit at a table where you know there's money to be made and people to exploit. And while a lot of the table was regulars and a lot of, you know, good solid-ish players, I knew that I could get the amateur and I just waited for the right spot and the right thing happened. And luckily we made the hero call there and ended up almost stacking him. And so it was a very good session. So yesterday we won about $450 and today Today we profited about $605 for a total profit in two days of about $1,000. So very nice end to this week home in Dallas. And now I am headed to Iowa to Council Bluffs for the Run Good Tournament Series. And straight from there, I'm headed to Choctaw to play the WPT main event. And if you guys want to sweat and follow along with me, you can buy action on State Kings. I have a special link below for you guys. And it's very easy, it's safe, and it's a great way to buy action. And 
buy a good sweat. So if you're interested in buying any action, it's on there. I'll also have my entire summer posted for the World Series of Poker on there coming up as well and the Lodge Championship Series. Stay tuned. And as always, if you guys want updates and first dibs on all of this stuff, make sure you follow me on Instagram at PokerFace underscore Ash. Well, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We're just getting started on this journey. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.